to man. Peyton Manning stepping out. It's the Zion Show. Pass is caught by Joe. It wouldn't be game day without the body paint. And Kentucky fans have had some real success this year. Their team has a chance to do something they've only done one other time since 1984, and that is win seven football games in a season. But today, the LSU Tigers, your defending SEC champions, come in here looking to repeat in 2002. They control their own destiny in the SEC Western Division race. Auburn right on their heels. Arkansas with a chance to sneak in as well if certain things happen. Kentucky wins the toss. They defer, so the Wildcats will kick off. And Dominic Davis lets it roll right by him. And one of the best in the country lets it roll out of the end zone. Dave Baker joins us once again. And Buzz, this LSU team coming off an open date. What does that mean? Well, you know, David, Nick Saban really doesn't like open dates, but he said it came at a great time for his team last week. They were banged up, and they needed to get regrouped in the secondary. One thing that is going to be a complete unknown today, though, is the wind. As you look at it, it's going from right to left, 17 miles per hour. Kickers are going to be trying to let up and guide the ball, and it is going to play havoc with the kickers and the throwers in this afternoon's game. Yeah, Buzz, and I think even the return guys might have an, some issues returning this. The wind is howling here in Commonwealth Stadium. Toss goes to Dominic Davis, gets a couple. Here's our Chevy starting lineups, beginning with the LSU offense. And Jarrell Myers is a guy with only seven receptions, and yet Jar Jarrell's a guy who's among the top five in career receptions. They'll need to get him cranked up today. Offensive line, Ben Wilkerson goes 300 pounds as a starting center. Folks, you don't see that very often, and Ben has been a good one throughout his career. And as we talked about in the opens, Marcus Randall, the sophomore out of Baton Rouge, four interceptions last week against Auburn, never felt comfortable, and they hope they can do something to right that today. First pass is incomplete. And that'll bring up a third down and long. Chevy defensive lineup for the Kentucky Wildcats. Dwayne Robertson, this is a good front four. Uh, Grigsby, Caudill, and Burns. Robertson gets double teamed nearly every play up front. That's how opposing teams feel about his performance at 311 pounds. They run a 4-2-5 look. Riley and Lane are your linebackers. David Johnson will be all over the football field, number six, wearing the blue jersey. About four yards shy of the first down, and LSU will have to punt it away as Otis Grigsby makes the stop. Kind of what you expected, Dave, right off the start. Nothing real dangerous. Ran the football on first down. Made a throw out into the right uh, curl area on the second play, and then a quarterback draw. So nothing real dangerous to Randall, trying to get him off to a decent start. Donnie Jones to kick it away to Derek Abney. Four touchdowns on punt returns, five returns total have been taken back for touchdowns. Jones' first kick nearly blocked. Abney chases it down at the 35. He's got a little bit of room, and Kentucky will start with great field position right near the midfield strike. Chevy's starting lineup for Kentucky offensively, R2 Spinner. He needs four yards to crack the 1,000-yard barrier, and he has six games with 100 yards this season. Abney Cook, Boone, and Harp will all be involved. Up front, Antonio Hall, 32 consecutive starts. Might as well go ahead and list him at 300 pounds. Come on, 299, 300, what does it matter? <laughs> Get him up there. He's a good one, though. Three wide outs to start the game in the eye formation. Penner's your tailback. Can't pay your fullback. A little delay handoff, and LSU right on the spot. Loses a couple, so make Penner. He now needs, I believe, uh, maybe six yards to crack the 100 yard or 1,000 yard barrier. Or well, Chevy lineup defensively for LSU. Lavallee has uh, been consistent with 44 tackles. Marcus Spears is a bad ankle, but they're going to see how many snaps they can get out of them. And Kendrick Allen gets healthier every week, so and they need him. Brady James, there's not much else we can say about him in the previous games we've done. He is an All-American candidate and continues to play well. This secondary has a little different look since Damian James has been kicked off the LSU team. Jack Hunt steps in at the safety spot this week. Also, Demetrius Hookfin has a bad ankle. Pass batted in the air. That's a dangerous situation for Kentucky off the hands of Aaron Boone.
R2 Spinner is a guy that can catch the football as well as run it. They had him on a fly pattern there, a little bit more of a, he thought he was open, but believe me, the corner was back there. The quarterback sees it. R2 will come back and say, hey, get me the ball, Jared, but uh, he was covered on that play. Well, much like LSU, Kentucky opens up with a third down and relatively long situation, third and a dozen. In the opening moments from Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington. Lorenzen has time, fires, pass off the hands of Randall Gay. Very close to being picked off. Aaron Boone, once again, the intended receiver, and Kentucky will now have to punt it away. LSU just playing an underneath man coverage with a safety help on top and a super play by Randall Gay. Gay is underneath the receiver, which is where he's supposed to be, and turns with the receiver's head and swats the ball away in Kentucky's punt. Jared knows that could have been a uh, dangerous situation. Not, a, not one of his better throws. But Pakalak, who leads the SEC in punting, sends it down to Dominic Davis. And Davis gets three or four yards. And this will be a show. Return game today on both sides. You'll want to stay around and watch this. Dominic Davis and Derek Abney, two of the best in America. Our referee today, by the way, Steve Shaw. Steve's one of the best, Dave. Yeah, we're lucky to have Steve. During the return, today. illegal block in the back on the receiving team. Penalty will be half the distance to the goal. First and 10. You're looking at number 32 right there. There's the block. Block in the back. And what that, the reason that happens, Dave, is because superior hustle on your coverage teams, they get the blockers out of position and you get a bad block. Jason Spadoni was the guilty party for LSU, and the Tigers are now backed up, and not a great situation for this LSU offense. This is how they started against Auburn two weeks ago. Need to pick up some first downs to the Tigers. High formation, Davis, your tailback. He'll get the handoff and dodges one defender. Could have lost a couple, got back to near the line of scrimmage. Kentucky fooled Marcus Randall here a little bit, got him to check into a run play, and there was nobody there. They checked into exactly what they wanted. The defense rallied around and made the play. Dave, you got a situation second and ten backed up. Do you when do you when do you let Randall throw it? Well, I think you still have to be safe down here, Dave. You got to take care of the football. Something, a crossing route of some kind, something short, and you can get a completion. Well, he's got four wide receivers in the shotgun, but they'll give it to Davis, and he's bottled up again. Got maybe a yard. Otis Grigsby came flying in from his end spot. That's Otis's third tackle already today. Wayne Robertson had a big part as well. Robertson makes a good play, stuffs the point of attack, which allows Grigsby to flow around and make the play. So good teamwork there on defense. A dime package in for Kentucky with six defensive backs on third down and eight. Randall will throw. Receiver slips down. Devery Henderson. Again, Dave, exactly what you expect. They're backed up. They've got a great defense. What they're going to do is protect the football. They gave Randall an easy throw, the outside screen to the wide receiver. If they pop it, so be it. If not, they punt the ball out of there and play defense. Derek Abney back to return the punt. He stands at the 50-yard line. Donnie Jones to punt it away. Coach Saban told us he was a little concerned about Donnie's punting in terms of hang time. He's hit a lot of line drives, but folks, don't worry about this one. It is a bomb. This is going to roll inside the five. Down to the one and a half yard line. His long coming in was 56 yards. 86 yard punt for Donnie Jones. He nearly kicked it out of the stadium. 86 yards. Derek Abney was standing at about the 50 yard line and when he decided to call it quits, the ball was already down inside the two. That's the longest ever against Kentucky in an LSU school record. Kentucky pinned up and they will give it to Penner and nowhere to go. He might have lost a yard. You know, Dave, we felt like that field position was going to be critical and the punt by Jones uh, emphasizes that they took care of the football and they're in the field and they got a big bomb out of the punter and the ball's down inside the Kentucky five. 
Just a, a simple ISO play straight up the field, pulled a guard around to try to get on the linebacker, but LSU is swarming the football on this in the field, looking for a turnover. Jeremy Lawrence steps up, makes a nice tackle. 29 tackles on the year for Jeremy. Here's Penner deep in the backfield. Gets out of the end zone, close to the five. Brady James, the senior All-American out of West Monroe, Louisiana, in on the stop. Brady with 100 tackles, now 101. And Brady had 42 more tackles than the next LSU defender. Brady only the second LSU guy with uh, 300 tackle right. seasons. Your my, guy. My ex-teammate, Al Richardson. This will bring up a third down and long situation again. Third and seven. We'll play action. Lorenzen steps up, fires, passes, caught by Abney out over the 21st down. Jack Hunt on the coverage for the Tigers. Well, everybody talks about how big Lorenzen is, but this guy can move around in the pocket. Watch this little subtle move, reset, and guns the ball to Abney. The guy has a real good pocket awareness and has the ability to keep himself alive, keep his shoulders square, and make throws down the field. That was a perfect example of that one. Fresh set of downs, and Kentucky out of some trouble, backed up on their own goal line. Here's Pinner. Gets maybe a yard. Tough running for R2 Pinner. Lionel Turner on the tackle. Second down and eight for the Wildcats. All sits at the 22. Lorenzen has time, but will run it. Lorenzen out over the 30 to the 35. That'll be a first down for the Wildcats. Dave, I don't think you can emphasize enough how much of a competitor this guy is. He's constantly hounded about how big he is, and he needs to lose weight. This guy drops back, surveys the field. He sees an opportunity to make a play for his team. And this guy's an athlete. He's a big athlete. And he just ran for a first down to extend this drive. First down and 10 from the 31. Artus Penner. Artus to the 39-yard line. Jack Hunt comes up, makes the tackle for LSU. It's been tough sledding for Artus early in this football game, but he's a major reason why this team is six and three. Dave, you alluded to the fact, and there it is. He's over 1,000 yards, Dave. Artus Pinner. For more on Artus, let's check in with Dave Baker. You know, Dave, Artus was a frustrated guy here. He wasn't getting a lot of carries. First guy that wanted to transfer when Guy Morris took over. Now he's got his 1,000 yards. You know what he said he was going to do? He said he was going to buy those linemen a meal. Said it was going to be a buffet, though, because they had big appetites. <laughs> Here's Penner catching the pass. Artus into LSU territory. Artus came in with 31 receptions, which was tied for the team lead. So not only can he carry it on the ground, he's a tough rookie out of the backfield. Credit the offensive line here, Dave. Tremendous protection. They're bringing some pressure to the right side. Lorenzen stands in, has good time, and Artus has done a super job catching the football. And once you get him in space, he's doing what he does best. That's run the rock. What a, what a season for Artus Penner. Tenth all-time at UK and rushing. Closing in on 2,000 yards. All day for Lorenzen. He goes deep, looking for Aaron Boone. Touchdown, Wildcats! 43 yards. Well, Aaron, Aaron Boone played a little basketball right here. The ball was hung up a little bit. And he plays off the corner, late in the, watch the throw, late in the throw, watch him shield himself against the defender, and then make the play. Oh, Over Corey Webster, the leading interceptor for the LSU Tigers. What a catch by Boone, having to lay out the defender on him. And that was a 90, I'm gonna get the exact total on that, but that may have been a 99 yard drive. Wow. 
Jared Lorenz and the numbers in terms of yards aren't staggering but what is becoming staggering are his touchdown to interception ratio 21 TDs just three interceptions this year and he just added a 43 yarder and Kentucky leads seven to nothing over LSU and Dominic Davis back to return the Clint Ruth kick. Devery Henderson will take it a couple of yards deep. Devery out over the 20 to the 25 yard line. Dustin Williams makes the tackle for the Wildcats. But uh, we talked about Jared throwing some short balls, but you like that last pass. Well, he shows a tremendous amount of patience, and it's because his offensive line is playing well. But, but watch how he throws this ball. That's thrown off your back foot. And folks, that went about 55 yards in the air. And ultimately, Boone came down with it for the first score of the game. Jared says one of the longest balls he's ever thrown traveled a little over 80 yards. I believe it after that throw he just made off his back foot. Four wide outs in the game. LSU trying to get a first down and get some momentum. Pressure coming. Randall uses great foot speed, gets out of the way. Pass is incomplete. Pressure coming from the backside from Quintus Cumby and Otis Grigsby. Well, Grigsby got in his face, but this is what they want to do with Marcus Randall, Dave. They want to give him some opportunities to be successful, and on the run is when he really plays well. Nick Saban pacing that sideline as Kentucky has uh, piled up 96 yards, and they had him pinned back third and seven inside the five-yard line, but a first down catch by Derek Abney kept the Kentucky drive alive. High formation, Joseph Adai. This guy can play. Adai takes it out to the 35-yard line. He'll be about a half a yard to a yard shy. Tayo Aboke makes the tackle for Kentucky. And Dave, what was it the coaches were talking to us about with Adai? More of a toe field type runner, a slasher, a guy that'll hit it up in there. And I think the word that the coaches use is he's hard, which means he's gonna hit you in the mouth if he can. Six foot, 200 pound freshman out of Houston, Texas, a redshirt freshman, averaging just over five yards per carry. And we saw him a couple of weeks ago uh, against Auburn and late in the game, a die was really uh, carrying much of the offensive load for LSU. Got a handoff. You now LSU's doing some things or Kentucky's doing some things to LSU that I don't feel like LSU thought they could do it. They're standing up at the point of attack. I think LSU thought they could come off the ball and knock Kentucky off the football and they're not doing that very well. Plottle standing in there making the play and that whole defensive front is very active with those linebackers flowing to help stuff the holes. John Goodner the defensive coordinator. A play action. Kentucky had a couple of chances at Randall. They finally bring him down. Looks like Randall might have dropped the football but fell back on it. Finally, Jeremy Cotto brings him down, but that could have been a four or five yard loss. We just talked about how active this defensive front is, and here they are. There's Rigsby. Dwayne Robertson's right there. Ultimately, you get about four or five jerseys around Randall, and they limit the run. They're very active, very pumped up in that front seven for the Wildcats right now. Now the Kentucky defense trying to stop LSU on a third down and six. Four wide receivers in the game. Here comes some pressure from Kentucky. Randall's pass to Clayton out over the midfield strike. That'll be a first down. And when you need a big play, go to Michael Clayton, the team's leading receiver with 31 catches on the year. You know what you see there, Dave, is immediate strides being made by Marcus Randall. Two weeks ago, he would have tried to run backwards and throw this football. This time, sets his feet against straight man coverage and sticks it on Michael Clayton. Clayton almost breaks this, and if he gets clean right there, he's gone, Dave. Great speed at the wide. But I don't think anybody has better speed in this conference and maybe in America in terms of wide receivers. LSU has got track stars up and down that line. Five plays. This is the sixth of this drive. Randall has time going deep. 
Clayton lost the ball. Wasn't sure which shoulder that was thrown over. And it falls harmlessly into the end zone. Tatum and Cumby on the coverage. At halftime, we'll be taking a look at the Alltel halftime stats. Dave Baker will be along for that. Unless he quits before halftime, which <laughs> could be possible. On a, what's turned out to be a gorgeous afternoon here in Lexington at Commonwealth Stadium where it was chilly this morning. The wind was howling. Wind still a factor, but not as bad as it was an hour ago, and the sun has broken through the clouds. Here's a look at the wind we're talking about, which will play a factor before it's all over, I believe. Sets up a little screen, looking for a dive. He dropped the football, and he had plenty of room to run. Are they saying it was a fumble? Our back judge comes in and says it's incomplete. Ellery Moore gets some good pressure, but it's because they allow him to get through on the screen. These are exactly the things that we wanted to see, and he never had control of the ball, Dave, on the screen. But these are the kind of things that they, they need to do for Randall to be able to be successful. A guy's got to make this catch. And if he does, he's got a lot of room to run. But Prince Pollard, the back judge, came in and signaled incomplete pass. Good job by the crew helping each other out. But third down and 10. Randall going deep again, looking for Henderson. Couldn't connect. And a flag down. A flag is down right where Randall threw the football. Steve Shaw to make the call for us. Personal foul, face mask on the defense, oh 15 boy. yards from the previous spot, first down. Big break for LSU. Now, th those are mistakes you just can't make. You expect to beat an LSU, but Randall sees an opportunity to throw the football downfield, stands in strong right there at the last moment, the reach up to grab the mask, and now LSU is threatening. Vincent Burns, number 98, the guilty party. Guy Morris can't be happy with that. Guy nope. feeling a little pain. It certainly broke his hand last week. Been well documented when he hit a locker at halftime. An ice house scoreboard, Arkansas, South Carolina, North Carolina on top of Clemson in the second. C State over Maryland. There's a die. Nowhere to run against that front five or six for Kentucky. John Robinson, the senior. Kentucky's going to gang up on the run, Dave. They're going to make uh, Randall beat him throwing the football. Right now, he has not indicated or shown that that might be the case. So they're going to make him prove that he can make some plays down the football field, and they're going to gang up and stop the run. Dominic Davis back in at running back for this LSU team. LSU had a stretch of six straight games, all games in which they won, where they scored over 30 points. That was stopped against Auburn two weeks ago when they could only muster seven. Right here. Pitch to Davis, dodges one guy. Davis stretches forward to the 32. Justin Haydock out of Louisville, Kentucky, on the tackle for the Wildcats. Trying to take care of the football. Try to keep Randall out of situations that, that are bad situations. That, what uh, Coach Jimbo Fisher said, he wants Randall to realize that there's other guys that can make plays and help him win the football game. They've got those guys. He's got to get him the ball. Randall, two of six, 15 yards to this point. Third down again. LSU has had third and long throughout the first quarter. Flag down, pass, bat in the air, and another flag down. Flags all over the place. Looks like maybe the left guard, Stephen Peter Peterman, might have lifted up. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five yard penalty, third down. Actually, that might be a break for LSU. Yeah, they would have had to try a field goal in this pretty fierce wind right now. They get another chance to reload. Albeit third and 12, they still get another shot. Oh. 
This is an opportunity here, Dave, I think, to give Randall an opportunity to make a play. Let him throw the football down the field. Let's see if we can make a play down the field. Third and 12. LSU 11th in the league in third down conversions at 33%. Pressure coming. Set up a little screen for Davis. And a nice play from Justin Haydock, who chased down Dominic Davis, shy of the first down marker. This is a big play by Haydock because, again, Dominic Davis is out in space. They set up a little screen. Randall does a good job with the patience. Haydock makes a super play because Davis is going to get the first down, and if he gets by the next guy, he's gone. Here comes John Corbello, the senior out of Lafayette, Louisiana, 11 and 15 on field goals. This will be a 45-yarder. As long this year is 48. The wind is blowing right across his face, right to left. the sixth block kick for Kentucky this year. Special teams have been a difference all year for the Wildcats, and they stepped up right there. Back after this. 7-0 Kentucky, and number 68, the junior out of Martin, Kentucky, Jeremy Caudill with the block. That is his second block this season. His partner up front, Dwayne Robertson, also has a block. And the special teams for Kentucky have been phenomenal this year. They continue to be solid. That pass is caught for a gain of about five, maybe four and a half. Tommy Cook, and that could be the last play of the first quarter. And I believe it'll do it. Two seconds. Jack Hunt, number eight, blitzing for LSU, but he's picked up nicely. The rinse and hit as he throws, and that pass should have been picked off by Demetrius Hookfin. Flagged down in the backfield, but Hookfin, who's battling a bad ankle, didn't start today, had his hands on it. Those are key plays. You have to make that play from a defensive standpoint. Hookfin's got to make that catch. Put his quarterback in a short field. They came with a safety blitz. A good job of picking it up. Holding on the offense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat second down. Hookfin makes that play. They have the ball at the 50-yard line, and Marcus Randall has a short field. Buzz, you got more on Demetrius? Yeah, Dave. Will Muschamp, the defensive coordinator, believes Demetrius is okay. What they want to do, though, is they want to avoid getting a big hit on that ankle. That's why they're going to spot him and make sure that he's as healthy as he can be for the third and fourth quarter. Corey Webster got the start in place of Hookman before he started last week as well when there were some changes in the secondary. Lorenzen knocks two LSU defenders off his left arm and throws it out of bounds. Byron Dawson and Melvin Oliver. We're talking about a guy that weighs 290 and another guy weighs 260. And Lorenzen just batted them off like they were flies. <laughs> That's exactly what he did. These are two gigantic humans coming at Lorenzen. And he just shrugs them off like they're a couple of kids in the schoolyard. And then he makes a great decision here. Throws the football away, conserves some field position. Lorenzen came in in relief of Shane Boyd last year here in Lexington against LSU and nearly led Kentucky to an upset victory. But a Rohan Davy touchdown pass with 13 seconds left was the difference. Kentucky going for it all here. Aaron Boone couldn't catch up with it. Jack Hunt stride for stride with Boone. Here's a look at our Gatorade first quarter stats. One well, thing that jumps out for you, Dave, is the fact that LSU has not been able to run the football, and that's their bread and butter. They really haven't done much of anything. Of course, the big drive added to most of those yards, including the 43-yard touchdown pass from Lorenzen. 19 rushing yards for Kentucky. Glenn Packelak back to punt it away. It's a low line drive. Trying to kick it away from Davis and it worked. Dominic kind of looks in disgust and will head back to the LSU Tiger. He wanted a chance to return it. Well, that's exactly what they were doing there. They kicked the ball low and out of bounds. Mark Nelson, the special teams coach, has instructed his kicker to kick the ball away from Davis into the wind. 
And he did a super job there. Got the ball out of bounds. You know, Mark Nelson spent a lot of time in the Canadian Football League. A lot of wind up there. We've got a windy day today. He's coached his kicker extremely well. I think he was a former linebacker, if not mistaken, in his playing days. He hit a few people in the mouth. <laughs> When you ran up to him and snuck attack on a sneak attack yesterday, I thought he was going to hit you in the mouth. <laughs> First down and 10. Here's Henderson. Every takes it to the 28-yard line. It's a good call by Jimbo Fisher to get the ball in Henderson's hands. Henderson is one of the playmakers. We've got a quarterback, Marcus Randall, right now that's uh, trying to find some rhythm. Hadn't done it yet, but what do you think? I think he's done a good job of minimizing mistakes. He's done a super job of taking care of the football. Here's another example of getting the ball to him in the flat. Henderson out over the 40. They'll spot it at the 49 yard line. Travis Adwell ran him out of bounds, but that's what they're going to probably try to be doing the rest of the afternoon. Let guys like Henderson and Clayton and Robertson and Carey and Myers make the plays. This play is going to come back, Dave, with a hold, but this is exactly what they want to do. You touched on it. They want to get the ball to their people in space. Get Henderson out in space, Clayton out in space, Davis out in space, and let them run. Kind of set up a little punt return for them. That's what they did there, but a the little hold by Clayton. Clayton gets the hold right there. Turned out to a negative play, but a big play, and those are the kind of things they want Randall to do. And that's what Jimbo Fisher's going to give him. Those are the opportunities he's going to give him to make plays. Three of seven for Randall. He was nine of 20 versus Auburn. We got a six defensive back package in for the Wildcats. Randall with a little quarterback draw. Marcus Randall out over the 30 to the 31. Claude Segal makes the tackle for Kentucky, but that, that at least shortens the first down yardage. It's going to be third and probably uh, five, four and a half for LSU. It's a good call by Jimbo Fisher. They're playing a combination coverage. Really, the only one left in the middle was the backer. Davis gets a block on the backer and allows Randall to hit it up in there, and that's what he does best. He's a super player on the move, great athlete. Third down, four and a half, call it five. Four wide receiver spread formation. Davis alongside Randall. Little shovel pass. There's some room. Plenty of room. Debra Henderson, look at the speed. Henderson will score. 70 yards. Let your playmakers make plays, Dave, and that's exactly what they did. Andrew Whitworth gets a super block and frees up Henderson on the shovel pass. You know, Coach Saban said he suggested the, sh the shovel pass. We talked to him this week, and he wasn't sure whether Jimbo put it in. Well, there's your answer, Nick. <laughs> yeah, he asked for it. Didn't sure, it wasn't sure they were going to put it in the package. Well, yeah, it's in there for a reason. Point after is up and good. That will help. Derek Abney back to return the kick. Corbello's kick is a good one. It'll send Abney deep in the end zone. Abney will take a knee. Well, let's check in with Buzz down on the sidelines. Hey, David, it was funny when Nick Saban was talking to us the other day. There was some guy at Michigan State, and of course, Nick used to be there, who was playing for Duffy Doherty, and they were trying to make him an All American, but he couldn't complete a pass. Duffy said, Hey, if the guy gets 200 yards passing, will you make him an All American? And everybody said, Oh, sure, it can't be done. So what they did was they threw 20 shovel passes during the course of the game, and Saban said that he told his guys, Hey, I can complete 20 of those. Let's go ahead and put it, put it in for this week. He didn't know whether they would or not, but I've got a feeling now he did know. Nick Seitz hurt his ankle pop, the Kentucky Center. He's got an air cast on. He's back in there right now for the Cavs. Yeah, we may see the shovel a little bit more today before it's all said and done after that success. A couple of yard gain for R2 Spinner. Jack Hunt makes the tackle. Well, LSU certainly has some momentum. They'll have to try to slow down this Kentucky team. They scored on a long pass play as well. 43 yards, Jerry Lorenzen. Aaron Boone. Well, Muscamp, uh, Coach Will Muscamp, the defensive coordinator for LSU, all he wants to do is he wants these guys to rally the football, make the tackles, and get off the field on third down. Saw so Nick Seitz back in there at the offensive line, helping 
Kentucky to their 104 yards of total offense. LSU up on over 130. Second down and six. Here comes some pressure from the outside. Picked up by the Wildcats. Pass is high, but caught by Abney. Right in front of Demetrius Hookman. First down, Kentucky. Hey, this is a tremendous catch. Good solid protection sets up the play. R2 Spinner is going to step up to the outside and pick up the blitzing linebacker. And Lorenzen steps up and puts some mustard on this one. He popped this in there. This is a tough catch. Abney, no fear, goes up in front of Hookfin and makes the play. Derek Abney, his 30th catch of the season. Lorenzen. Pass incomplete, looking for Chris Bernard. Pressure came from Lionel Turner. For the best deals on cars, trucks, and SUVs, visit your local Toyota dealer today. Nick Saban told us, trying to get his team to not worry about the big picture, the end of the road, the SEC championship. He wants his guys to play this game by game, focus on the Wildcats, and he even breaks it down even further and says, we need to focus on each particular play and don't worry about the eventual outcome. Do your job on that play at that moment. That's been his mindset throughout. Penner with a couple of yards. Well, these two football teams are hitting each other. You can hear the popping in there as Penner hit it up in there. And LSU coming up to try to jar that ball loose. We talked to the coaches on the Kentucky side. And we don't want to jinx our twos, but he hadn't laid the football on the ground in two years here. And they have a lot of confidence in having him hit it up in there for him, keep these in manageable situations. Kentucky's third down conversion rate this year is third in the Southeastern Conference at 39.4%. They've been pretty good in that area. Pressure coming, Randall Gay all over Lorenzen, who ends up getting the pass off. What do you do? An incomplete pass. Randall Gay goes 170 pounds, and we're thinking Lorenzen up around 300. Yeah, Randall's like a gnat on his shoulder right here. <laughs> and he's going to swat it in. Give Randall credit. He stayed with him. Look at him stay with him. And another good, good decision by Lorenzen to save the field position, put his punter in a good spot, throw it away. But Boy, that was, uh, he was on a bear hunt right yeah. there, wasn't he? That, that's, that's not the first time nor the last time we'll see that. It's just what it's like. Pakalak to put it away. Wobbly kick. Davis will let it go. And once again, Kentucky's punt team has done a nice job. Puts LSU at the seven. A couple of tight ends. The toss sweep to Davis. Dominic got over the 10 near the 15. They'll mark it just shy of the 14. Ronnie Riley makes the tackle. Ronnie, a good story. A guy opening game last year. Blows out a knee, misses the whole season. It was to be his final year. Got a, a red shirt out of it. Came back and uh, has really been a leader. One of the many seniors on this team. Yeah, and this guy's also working on his master's degree, Dave. He's headed toward a business master's degree, which is uh, amazing that he can balance that kind of load and still play the kind of football he's playing. Already has a degree in decision science and info systems. Here's Davis. It's just tough sled. Well, we're getting a taste of what LSU wants to do. Jimbo Fisher, the offensive coordinator for LSU, has done a good job of mixing things up in the first quarter, quarter and a half of this football game. He's given Kentucky a lot of different looks offensively. Both coaches talked how important the first down was in this football game in particular. First 15, not what you're looking for. Davis gets four. That'll bring up a second down and 11. You, know, you just can't keep doing that over and over. Second and 11, third and eight. You're asking for trouble. You're now in second and long situation. Dominic Davis has done a super job of filling in for LeBrandon Tofield after the injury. And they're doing what they want to do now. I kind of get a sense that momentum changed after the Henderson touchdown. The offensive line's coming off the ball and hitting Kentucky, and they're moving, they're moving the ball on the ground a little bit. Andrew Whitworth in that backfield trying to get some signals. Andrew, 6'7", 335 pounder. Looks like he weighs about 250. He's put on some more weight. Randall to throw a little screen. Davis 
I, even if he caught it, he wasn't going anywhere. What's happening on the screen here, Dave, is the offensive line is turning some of the defensive linemen loose. It's a timing play. It's a play where the linemen want to do probably a three count and then turn people loose. You see Davis is out there and there's no linemen out there, so the timing on the screen pass is screwed up. But it's definitely some of the things they need to do. Now they're third and long, backed up in their own end. Do you just throw it deep in these situations and if it gets picked off, so be it? Or no, I don't think that helps your quarterback. I think you try to get a guy the ball on the run and see if he can get a first down. Randall buys time. Dragged down well shy of the first down, and he got popped at the 23-yard line. Morris Lane and Mike Williams converged for the hit. Williams put that late hit on him that uh, might have knock the cobwebs out anyway. Well, you, you can saw right there that Randall's been talked to by his coaches because he had a guy initially open in the slot, decided that I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to run it up in here. We're going to punt the football and play field position. Good decision, though. I think he's making some real good decisions. Donnie Jones's last punt went 86 yards. And this is another excellent kick. Abney has to backpedal down to the 18. Makes a defender miss, a flag down. Abney with room. Derek Abney, but this will be coming back, but you see a little bit of why Abney is so dangerous, but a flag is down. Kentucky's been pretty good about that this year, blocking in the During back. The return, illegal block in the back on the receiving team. After this is to the goal, first down. Let's see if the Kentucky blocker gets his head in front. See, the head is on the back, and you're going to get that call every time. If his head had been in front, he gets a chance to make that an illegal block, but with the head on the back. The excellent hustle outside by that, and they want to get on Abney. Abney is a guy you got to cover up, Dave. Four punt returns for a TD this year. He's Four NCAA records, 10 Kentucky records, got a half a dozen league records. Uh, you know, he returned a kick and a punt. He had a receiving touchdown against Florida. I mean, it's just, and you look at him, and you, and you look at him in our meetings, and he says he's 170 right now. He's a buck 55. Tight end was covered up, and there was seven men on the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down. Yeah, you know, getting back to Abney, Dave, he's like seeing your little brother in playing video games. He's just not the kid you expect making all these plays, but he is nails tough. Shane Boyd in at quarterback for Jared Lorenzen. Boyd started the opening part of the season a year ago and actually started against this LSU team. Gives it to Penner. Chase Hart makes a super block on this play, the tight end. He's going to get on linebacker Jeremy Lawrence. First down now for Kentucky. And we think we had a little extracurricular after the play, Dave, or no? Uh, just a little pushing. Oh, okay, a little extracurricular. That's, that's legal. Our two spinner averaging over 110 yards per game. Six 100-yard contests. Hard, it's hard for me to say that with the Kentucky offense the last few years. But here's Pinner. He gets up to the 30. And they say Pinner, you know, he's so involved in this offense, Dave. It's it's and it's hard to believe after every game he's not even nicked up. He doesn't spend any time in the training room. No, he's put together pretty well, Dave. This guy, he's about 5'11", five, five about 100 or 225 pounds. Takes care of himself. But they found a little something on this little toss play weak side. Gotten two good blocks from the offensive line and the tight ends, and they've pushed it out now over the 30-yard line. Penner, 10 for 35. Once again, Shane Boyd in at quarterback for Jared Lorenzen. And Boyd gets hit at the 32-yard line. Coaches said that uh, Shane Boyd had a real good week of practice and had been working hard and thought he'd made some progress and wanted to get him a few snaps today just in case you never know Shane of course will be their guy they think for next season 
uh, are down the road. I guess the is another year away. But coaches, you know, say uh, Shane Boyd's a guy that's a great athlete, former draft pick for Major League Baseball. And there is Jerry. High formation. Boyd throws it. Pass is caught by Abner. The little man uses his big blocker and I think picked up the first down. Got right behind Jason Rollins, the guard. And hard to see him. Brent Peace, the offensive coordinator for Kentucky, is doing a super job of calling his game also. We talked about the offensive coordinator for LSU and Jimbo Fisher. This is just a little screen outside to Abney. And again, all you're trying to do is get your playmakers out in space, give them a little block, and see if they can hit the crease. And Abney does a great job at the end of the play, diving, picking up the first down. with tight ends for Kentucky. Loose football. Looked like Boyd just didn't get the football into the bread basket of R2 Spinner. Well, if you're going to hand the football off, give him the football. <laughs> whether he was trying to carry out a play action fake or whether he actually wanted to pull it out, it, it wasn't clear there. But he, if he wants to give it to R2, go ahead and give it to him. He's going to do something with it. <laughs> right. Don't be shy, Shane. <laughs> Shane, also a member of the Kentucky baseball team, doesn't know yet whether he will play this upcoming year. Pitcher on the Wildcat baseball team, Keith Madison. Will play action. There's Tommy Cook, puts his head down and gets it close to the 40. Jack Hunt with his fifth tackle this afternoon. Of course, Jack playing that spot, Damian James left. Uh, Damian, the senior uh, leader on that defense, along with Brady James, kicked off the team a couple of weeks ago when he just kind of disappeared for a week. And uh, uh, Nick Saban thought it was in the best interest of not only this team, but the program in general uh, to not allow certain things to happen. So Jack Hunt steps in. But what does that do to a team? Well, the first week we saw what it did. In Auburn, they really struggled defensively, missed some tackles, were a little disoriented. They've had two weeks to practice, and it looks, they look much better this week. Boyd steps up, fires, ball was loose. Looked like maybe somebody got in the way of his arm. Made him uh, throw it in the dirt a little bit shy of his intended target. So that'll bring up fourth down. But nonetheless, Shane Boyd got seven, eight snaps out of that. And what he did, Dave, is he moved the ball out of there into the field. They're now out almost to the 40-yard line, and it's a manageable field position situation. Little field position play here, and this is what we're going to see, I think, throughout the game. Got to play defense and play good field position and be smart on offense with the football. Pakalak leads the Southeastern Conference in punting. 45 per kick. Davis has a returnable punt. Dominic Davis out over the 30. Good coverage. A flag comes flying in late at the 38. Aaron Boone makes the tackle, number 13. Today is a split telecast for us here on Jefferson Pilot. Some folks in our viewing audience are watching this one, and Arkansas is leading South Carolina 10 to nothing. Certainly some bowl implications riding on that one. South Carolina's offense been sluggish all season long. With his quick feet, picks up the first down out over the 34. Well, you're going to get a bad decision at the end of this play, Dave. Michael Clayton comes back and hits a defensive back that's pursuing oh. the play late. And uh, they're going to get a 15 yard penalty after Marcus Randall makes a great decision to run with the football. This is what they want to do get him out on the edge. Picks up the first down right here late. See 14 come in and hit right there. Here's Michael Clayton peeling back, trying to help his young quarterback, but you got to be smart. Got to be smart. That's not a smart play, and if a young player makes a mistake. Derek Tatum, the senior at that corner spot, was the one who got popped. And, uh, Dead ball, personal foul on the offense. The play made a first down. Will come out 15 yards to the end of the run, and then it will be first and 10. Well, at least LSU got the first down. <laughs> They got the first down, but it's a situation where Randall gets out on the edge, makes a nice play, feels good about himself, gets it out up over the 30, 
And uh, one of his playmakers, who he's counting on to make plays for him, hurts him with a block there. The ball sits at the 19-yard line. A die, still the tailback, number 10, and he gets the toss sweep. A die runs hard, out over the 20 to the 23. Jeremy Caudle, the first man there, followed up by Dwayne Robertson. Jeremy caught a little slow to get up inside the 20 on the far side of the field. He's a tough guy. Look at him trying to get off the field. It's like a shoulder problem. We have not called his name a lot today, but he has been a factor all day long. Their defensive tackles. Coach Goodner said that he really loved his defensive tackles and, and Cottle was a big part of that. He's been in the backfield all day long today. Stay tuned, coming up at halftime, we'll be highlighting the best in the SEC, presented by Don Pablos. Two minutes, nine seconds away. Dave Baker will join us for our halftime activities. Don Goodner, the defensive coordinator. Good news for Kentucky, if one guy goes down up front, they've got Ellery Moore to replace him. Third and four for the Tigers, a little option. Here's Davis with room, Dominic. I think got the first down. If he got to the 30, move the chains. Just another look from the offensive coordinator. We get a little option play and pitch to Davis, and now it's all Davis. He realizes he needs just a yard more to get the first down. He gets it and extends the drive. Good recognition of knowing where he had to get for the first down. That little effort got him over the 30 yard line. They moved the chains. 128 and counting before intermission. Look at Randall go. Fumbles the football. LSU retains possession as Reggie Robinson came out of a pile of bodies with the football number four. I think like 10 guys might have touched that. This is a design running play. They pull the tackle up inside and, Ro and uh, Randall falls him straight up inside. But about six, seven guys have shots at this. All different colored jerseys <laughs> diving in there and Robinson comes up with it. Well, Claude Seguel forced the fumble, but to no avail for the Wildcats. Randall to fire, pass is caught. Devery Henderson, who already has a touchdown to his credit off a shovel pass, moves the chains. Good looking pass and catch from Randall to Henderson. Well, he's playing with a lot of confidence. Now he's in the two minute offense, running the no huddle offense, directing traffic. He's got a short list of plays he wants to go to in this situation. Clock starts again after they move the chains. Randall in the shotgun. Four-man pressure from Kentucky. Pass is caught at the 11. No, incomplete. Well, he came back with the same play on the same sideline, trying to get the ball back to Henderson. Credit the young guy for realizing coverage did not change. He just throws the ball a little short. Henderson run a little corner out, flattens his route off to give him a sideline throw. And the ball's just going to skip on the yeah. ground. They pin Good it against call. the ground. Good call. Good job by those officials down there. And we don't even really have to say that today because the supervisor of officials, Bobby Gaston, is here at the game, so he can't hear us today. <laughs> Randall, he's got some room. Flag down. Randall takes it inside the 10, but a flag right in the spot where they'll call holding, and Nick Saban is about to blow a gasket. Oh, my goodness, is he hot. Well, this is another mistake, Dave. He realizes they can't make the mistakes. This is probably going to come back because of a hold. We already had an illegal block earlier in the game that cost them about 15. Holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty from the previous five with each second down. Nick was about 10 yards out on the football field. Screaming and waving. 
Not exactly sure where the hold comes. Looked pretty clean in there. Looked but like again, it. another big play call back there. Looks like they might have gotten Steven Peterman on Dwayne Robertson. Randall's playing with a lot of confidence right now. LSU has been penalized seven times today. Randall hit as he throws, pass is caught by Clayton, and he gets turned upside down. But the ground caused the fumble. It came free when he hit the turf. There's 14 seconds down to 13 seconds on the stadium clock. And a timeout taken by LSU. Dwayne Robertson is going to get some, some heat right up through the middle on Randall. Takes a big lick, but he stands in there and throws a perfectly accurate throw to Clayton. You saw the, the ground definitely called, caused the fumble. Nick a little upset about some things here on this drive. Well, I think one thing they did is they didn't call timeout. The, play, the ball was, the clock was still running. They wanted to conserve some time for another shot down the field before they had to come in with a field goal attempt. And uh, they ran about four or five seconds off the clock before they did finally burn the timeout. He has no limitations here as far as a quarterback standpoint. Randall can throw the ball into the middle of the field wherever he wants to throw it because he does have that one timeout left. Nick on the headsets with Jimbo Fisher. Trying to figure out the uh, the call here. Because you know something over the middle of the field is going to be open. Well, what they're talking about with Marcus Randall right now is we're going to throw the football. If we do throw the football, let's not take a sack here. We're in field goal range. You've done a good job all half of taking care of the ball. Let's take a shot if we've got it. If we don't, hit it up in there and let's kick the field goal and go in with uh, the lead at halftime. With that timeout on the board, and LSU could run maybe a little draw and get a little closer down into decent field goal territory, but they're going to throw it. Miranda goes to the end zone, looking for Henderson, and he caught it! Oh, what a catch between two blue jerseys. Touchdown, LSU. Wow. He put the ball up for one of his playmakers to make a play, and Henderson did it. A lot of purple and gold in the corner of the end zone. Watch that touchdown as Corbello splits the uprights, and LSU with five seconds left before halftime takes the lead. Five seconds to go. What a catch from Devery Henderson, the former running back, the junior in Opelousas, Alabama. He and Marcus Randall have hooked late today. Short kick will be taken by Justin Haydock. And Kentucky with five seconds left. No time came off the clock, but uh, we'll probably just take a knee. Guy Morris will go regroup with his troops in the locker room. How much better do you think Marcus Randall feels about going oh. in the locker room this week than he did two weeks ago in Auburn? And I think it's a credit to him and his coaches because he's made that kind of those kind of strides, and that's what you're going to see from a young player. He, he's going in with tremendous amount of confidence. And Kentucky goes to the locker room, trailing by a touchdown. 14 to 7. Marcus Randall, Devery Henderson. They hook up for 70 yards off a shovel pass and then go for 30 right before intermission. LSU, when they lead at halftime, have been very good under Nick Saban. They are 20 and 1. Let's check in with Buzz. Nick, you got your quarterback in some good spots, got him through the first quarter, and he looked like a different guy the second quarter. Well, he played better as the game went on, but it's just a confidence thing with him, you know. But we didn't play very well around him. We got too many penalties on offense. We're not finishing our blocks and running the ball effectively, and they're doing a good job, and they hit a big play on us, so it's going to be a tough game for 60 minutes. Defensive field position, though, allowed you to stay in it, though, in the first half. Well, the great punt helped us, but they, that's when they marched the ball on us. That would have changed the field position, but uh, we've been able to operate pretty well offensively. All right, thanks, Nick. We appreciate it. But first, he tosses it to Joseph Adai. Joseph Adai, the red shirt freshman. It's a foot race to the goal line. Strike up the band. Wildcats trail by seven. Dave Baker caught up with Kentucky's head coach. 
Guy, in terms of that first half of play, you were able to hit that first big play, and then your defense played pretty well for you, except for their two big plays. Yeah, I know it. Uh, we got we to gotta find some offense, you know. First of all, we had one play. We went kind of flat. I thought the second quarter we got a little flat defensively. We got to get our energy back up, get our kids running the football. There's been a lot of talk about Jared's conditioning in the second half. You went with Shane there. Has that got anything to do with it? You just looking no, for a little different look? Absolutely nothing to do with his shape. We're just trying to find a spark. All right. Good luck, guy. Best of luck to you in the second half. It's Guy Morris. His catch trailed 14 to 7, Dave. There's a look at our quarterbacks. Ran into Jared's mother out in the parking lot today. She said, stay off my boy. It seems like Jared maybe has been getting a little heat uh, about his weight, maybe. But when we talked to him about it yesterday. He said, it's no big deal. He's been playing this way since he was a youngster, and it hasn't affected him, and it's not doing it now. Abney on the return. Derek Abney gets the feet on the crowd on their feet. He takes it out over the 25, but a flag down at the 17-yard line. Steve Shaw, our referee, about to make the call for us, and Kentucky backing way up in their own territory. R2 Pinner. Pinner not with a huge first half, 10 for 35, but actually made up some ground. He lost four or five yards in his first couple of carries, but went over the 1,000-yard mark. He's the 10th all-time leading rusher in Kentucky history. Brady James, number 11. Another guy who's had some substantial numbers, but R2 Pinner has been uh, a real plus for this team as they have become a more balanced offensive unit. I believe this is a big series for Kentucky. They need to punch this football out and get it in manageable field position so before they punt it, LSU win with all the momentum at halftime. Lorenzen at his goal line, slips, and then fires a bullet. Abney, oh, that would have been a tremendous catch into double coverage, but he laid out for it. Lejeune and Gay for LSU back there on Abney. Lorenzen slips a little bit as he comes out of the play fake, which makes this play take a little longer. Had he been able to get it out on time, this might have been a completion. But Abney, as he always does, selling out, trying to make a play for his quarterback behind the LSU defenders. They call Derek White Lightning in these parts. Got all the moves and a big heart to go along with it. Lorenzen shakes off one LSU potential sack and gets out of bounds out over the 12 on third down and 10, but that's a long way from the first down marker. This tackle came from Chad Lavallee and Lejeune, and Byron Dawson finally brought him out. Another play action fake, taking advantage of Penner's ability to run the ball. Just good coverage downfield by LSU's defense, and you know they're going to finally get the big guy on the ground. Only took four of them, Dave. That's it. <laughs> Well, that's what it takes for everybody. I mean, everybody across the league says you got to hold on and wait for help. Bacalac nearly had it blocked. He's never had one blocked in his career. Davis takes it at the 30. Dominic. Coverage has been great on both sides today. We'll see how he plays here in the second half. But first, he tosses it to Joseph Adai. Joseph Adai, the red shirt freshman. It's a foot race to the goal line. Strike up the band. For Kentucky to stay in the football game, they needed to limit big plays, and they have not done that to this point. Joseph Adai, who you really, you really like this guy, Dave, and we talked about him and thought that he might get some more playing time today. He's a true tailback. Look how patient he is. He let two blocks develop and just maybe just a finger on him in the, on, the, uh, on the right thigh, and he goes all the way. Going after is up and good. Joseph Adai had five carries for 17 yards in the first half. And in the second half, one carry and went 63 yards and put LSU up by 14. For Bello to kick off as Michael Clayton holds it on a windy day in Lexington. Abney, Derek Abney, 
swarmed at the 22-yard line. Lorenzen under center. Batted down at the line of scrimmage. That was a big concern for Brent Pease, the offensive coordinator. How about the last two drives for LSU? 181 yards. Over half their offense has been on the last two drives. 63 of those came just a few seconds ago. And Nick Saban told us the other day in our, in our meeting with him, he says, you know, we can't turn it over and we need a couple of big plays. Yeah, and over half of that yardage, uh, half of the 181 came on two plays. The 60-yard touchdown, the 30-yard touchdown pass. Here's Pinner, Artus Pinner. Dragging a couple of players with him, running hard. First down Kentucky to the 40. Norman Lejeune makes the stop. And I guarantee you Guy Morris walked over to his offensive line and said, listen, we got to come out with a little resolve here. we got to come off and buck these guys in the head and get Artus Pinner loose. Artus Pinner has been the heart and soul of this offense for the bulk of this season. 600-yard games, and here, he shows why he's been able to string that together, 110 per game. He's got a little something going now. Artus, the leading rusher in the Southeastern Conference. Lorenzen, the leading passer in terms of efficiency in the SEC as well. Little play action. Hit from behind. And they will call grounding on Lorenzen, who's pointing to Campe, his fullback, saying that he couldn't have gotten the pass to him as he got hit, but tried to get it there. Lavallee was the player from LSU who wrapped up Lorenzen from the backside. Well, this is always the gripe of the quarterback. You throw a ball in the area. No flag on the play. There was a receiver in the area. You know what? That's great officiating, officiating Dave, because they did have a, a player out in the flat. He takes a shot in the back here. Play action fake. He's got his fullback in the flat, takes a shot. And he's been standing up all day long throwing balls with people hanging on him, and I think that's a good decision by the officials. I think LSU probably just glad to see Lorenzen hit the deck. Lorenzen 0 for his last five, but he hands it to Pinner. Artus Pinner. Run out of bounds. At the 34-yard line, Jack Hunt on the stop. That'll be a gain of 27 yards. Once again, we talked about the offensive line coming off and, and establishing some blocks. And Pinner finishes the drive off with an extra five. Now, the wide receivers do such a good job. This is how you get extra yardage. The fullback, there's Abney blocking. Boone was making some blocks. That's how you get the longer runs. R2, 13 carries today, 80 yards. Artus working hard. It's hard to believe Artus Pinner was about to what we talked to him yesterday. He was yeah, a funny guy. Many of the players think he's the funniest player on the team, but he walked into he came he walked into Guy Morris as soon as he got the job. Guy had only been on the job for a, 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 like an hour and Artus walks in there and says, Coach, I quit. I don't want to play here. You're going to throw it. And finally, the coach convinced him to stay and I asked Artus yesterday. I said, where were you going? Did you have a plan? He said, I had no idea. <laughs> Well, the idea now is to get it to 20. Look at the twos. Oh, loose football. Loose football. LSU says they, they do have it. They say they have it, and they do. R2 Spinner running hard, coughs it up. And what was it guy said yesterday that R2 had not put the ball on the ground for two years? And, and that's what LSU's defense does. They create turnovers. Artus makes a, a tremendous run here, jumps in the air, and the ball's worked out. Now the fans are taking exception because it looks like he might have been on the ground before the ball came loose. Lionel Turner comes up with the fumble recovery. Oh boy. Artus didn't think he fumbled it. The option to Davis. Dominic Davis. What a big block from the fullback, Solomon Lee. You're exactly right. Claude Segal. Latin Segal. <laughs> Unbelievable block. This is only the second time they've run the option, Dave, and both times they've been successful. 
Arthur Spinner averaging six yards a carry but would give all that back just to hold on to the football this crowd still a little miffed at that call. LSU causes another turnover. They've gained that's their sixth fumble they have gained this year. They have 12 interceptions. Sideline warning Kentucky at the first sideline warning. <laughs> that's like throwing a little gas on the fire if you're Steve Shaw. <laughs> you might want to keep the, the mic off for a few minutes. <laughs> I'd go and let him creep in that wide a little bit right yeah. now. Don't worry about that. <laughs> right. <laughs> I guarantee he don't he doesn't want that guy mad at him right there. He broke his hand last week did Guy Morris hitting a locker not an official let's get that straight. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> guy the former NFL offensive lineman a couple of Super Bowl rings. Handoff goes to Davis Dominic Davis running hard. Quintus Cumbie steps up first man on the spot. Followed up by Ronnie Riley. And the crowd still going at it. Now the defense is going to have to step up here now, Dave. They've, they've been a couple of times. They've broken a couple of times. This is an opportunity for them to step up, make a statement, and stop LSU. They have not stopped them the last two times LSU's had the football. A lot of blue in Commonwealth Stadium. Close to 70,000 on hand. 21 7 LSU in the third quarter. Pressure coming, Randall. And a face mask will be coming. Otis Grigsby will get credit for the tackle. And I believe Otis Grigsby might be the face mask culprit, but he just swiped across the mask. He already has one today on Randall. And if this. And maybe they're picking. Here's the call from Steve Shaw. Well, Kentucky's trying to step up defensively, and I mean, it they got do a good job of getting to the quarterback. They just can't be. Yeah, he just—he's raked across the face. It's the rule you can't get on the mask. You know, they're trying to make a play, but they went the other way. Certainly looked unintentional, but a rule is a rule, and he got some of the face mask. Marcus Randall and company pick up the first down on the penalty. That time, Randall goes head first. Right about the 46 yard line and guess who got him Otis Grigsby you think he had a little uh, little sting in him. Yeah I think everybody on wearing a blue jersey right now has a little sting in him and Grigsby is the head of that. But this again was a design play for Randall to run the football and playing it close to the vest. Grigsby makes a nice play for this defense. Second and long now. LSU has been very good in the turnover department. They've gained 10 fumbles, 10 interceptions, 20 takeaways. Only had 13 takeaways last year, and they were last in the SEC in turnover margin. So that's an area that's really helped them this year win six football games, and they really need to answer after the R2 spinner fumble. Pitch to Davis. He's corralled, loses three, and guess who? Number one eight. You know what they're doing, Dave? Is they're doing what we talked about at halftime, getting back to the pressure package. They let a die get loose here, but early in the half, but they've come back to their pressure package. Look how many blue jerseys are around the line of scrimmage, and and Grixby's playing like a man on a mission right now. Third down and 13. The crowd will tell you what happens on this third down conversion. Henderson got past the defensive back Antoine Huffman but Randall overthrow him and LSU will have to punt it away. Well there's an easy reason why that ball was overthrown and it's because the receiver and the quarterback were not on the same page. The receiver establishes an area he's going to run to Randall threw the ball anticipating him to be on a deeper angle and that's why the incompletion occurred. 
Last time Donnie Jones punted this way he hit it 86 yards. That's right 86 yards. Longest punt in LSU history. Boy, this be a big place for Abney right here. Derek stands at the 14, the SEC's top return man. Four touchdowns returned by way of the punt. One off a kickoff. Jones gets it off. It's a line drive punting away from Abney, but the result is pretty good field position for Kentucky. They will get it at the 25-yard line. Krause still a little hot under the collar. Their team trails by 14. Back to Lexington after this. He's ready to hit somebody. The youngster watching his Wildcats. Trail by 14 at home. Kentucky has won a couple of big road games in the SEC, but they've lost two in a row here at Commonwealth Stadium. Guy Moore said he really wanted to win just for the home fans because they've been so supportive. Chase Hart out over the 40 to the 42. They have a little read screen on here, Davidson. It's a, it's a really neat call. They send Pinner to the flat and drag the tight end over the middle, and he's reading the inside linebacker. If the linebacker widens with Pinner, he hits the tight end. Nice little crease in there. I'm anxious to see Artus get his hands on that football again because he's probably still a little upset about the call when he turned it over after running hard. He has five carries for 54 yards here in the second half. 8-13 to go in the third quarter, and here is Toos. Runs into three white jersey. Kendrick Allen, the first one back there. Kendrick Allen is slowly but surely getting healthy again as Kentucky defenders getting a little workout. Eric Tatum over there on the bike. Arkansas over South Carolina on the road by 17. The Pizza Hut scoreboard running through a couple of ACC games. Big Ten tied at three. Texas over Baylor. Here it's 21 seconds. Shotgun. Oh my! Tommy Cook just met Jack Hunt. And I don't think he wanted to say hello. <laughs> it's a flanker screen, and the first blocker out has to pick the most dangerous man. A lot of times it's the cover guy for the for the player you're screening to, but as it turned out, he picked the wrong guy. <laughs> One more look, and Jack Hunt read that very well. Remember, Jack Hunt replacing Damian James at a safety spot. Hunt has nine tackles. Lorenzen under pressure through the hands of Artus Pinner. Brady James was right there. That would have been shy of the first down. Good pressure coming from Marquise Hill, the sophomore of New Orleans. Hill, 6'7", 290 pounds. He's one of the few guys who could get Lorenzen by himself. Yeah, and he did that. He threw him down pretty hard. But LSU secondary has really tightened up their coverage. On the outside receivers, they're not allowing him a lot of room, and Jared's reluctant to try to stick the ball in there, much to his de uh, development as a, as a quarterback. The best versus the best. Packlack leads the SEC. Dominic Davis second in returns. Pakalak kicks it out of bounds. Good kick inside the 15. Lynch had three punts inside the 20 today. That gives him 24 of 52 punts inside the 20. We'll return to Lexington after a word from your local stations. Jared Lorenzen has extended his school record streak without throwing an interception to 139 attempts. But the bottom line for Jared is the Wildcats have only put seven on the board today, and that came in the first quarter. Yeah, the big fella's going to have to get something going next time we get the ball. Marcus Randall's had a nice afternoon in Lexington in his second road start, his third start overall. And he's, uh, I, I give the coaches a lot of credit, Dave, but Marcus Randall has done what they've asked. He really has. He's worked within the confines of the offense, but let's give him credit. Let's give him credit, too. He's grown up for the last two weeks. He's a much better player this weekend. This is what you expect from a young quarterback. Making plays. And go ahead. Yeah, Randall. Yeah. Red Marcus, you, you deserve to celebrate a little bit. He's played really well. Numbers today. Pretty good. 157 yards. Team 
rushing to 74 against Auburn. Dominic Davis bounces off one blue jersey. Jeremy Caudles on one knee at the 15 gets up now, but you can't believe that Davis got away. That would have been about a six-yard loss. You want to see some confidence in a quarterback. He's going to run the option here, and he's going to get wrapped up. Still makes the dish. Nice play by Randall. And then Davis breaks a tackle and gets some positive yardage. Third down and three. Here come the Kentucky fans on their feet. Wildcats thinking pass here. Six DBs in the game. See if they bring some pressure. Randall rolls right, throws, knocked down. Mike Williams, number one, got a paw on it, knocked it away, and that'll bring up fourth down. So another good defensive stand by the Wildcats. Well, how about the big fellas? Look at look at Grigsby continue to pursue. He just would never let Marcus Randall get comfortable to make that throw. Grigsby's motor's been running full bore since they kicked this one off. All right, well, the punters have won the game today against the punt returners. Abney inside the 40. She falls on it, but Kentucky will have the football inside the 10. Dion Holtz, a backup defensive end from Bowling Green, Kentucky. I had a chance to talk with Mark Nelson, the special teams coach for Kentucky, and he felt like they could get one today, and they did. He had a little scheme he had set up. He felt like they were neglecting one side of the ball. They rushed in there and got the block. Mark Nelson done a super job these special teams this year with this ball club. Second block punt of the year against Donnie Jones. And that is the seventh block kick by Kentucky this year. Handoff, Pinner, off tackle, Pinner inside the five, down to the four. Buzz, let's check in with you. You know, Dave, uh, when we were talking to Derek Abney yesterday, he said that Mark Nelson, that special teams coach, absolutely, without a doubt, watches more tape than anybody on the Kentucky staff. He cuts it up so that the short time that they've got for special teams is used awfully well. And boy, have they made the most of it this year, not only running back kicks, but blocking. Well, let's see if this block can pull Kentucky within a touchdown. Here's Pinners. Stumbles, slips on the turf at about the eight and falls forward. Did a nice job to get it back to the original line of scrimmage. But that'll bring up third down and goal from the three. Well, I think they really wanted to pound this football in, make a statement. It's always great for the offensive line when you can stick it in the end zone. Now they're going to have to go to more of a spread package and give Lorenzen the ball, see if he can make a play with his arm. Surprise, Derek Abney comes out, usually sure-handed receiver, so maybe they're going to try to throw it, uh, run it right down the throat at LSU. Well, they got to run, run formation in the game. Little play action, they'll throw it, tight end, hard touchdown! Pinner is a weapon no matter where he lines up. Here, it's because he's a decoy. Play action fake the pinner, and they get it into the tight end. Nice touch on the ball by the big fella, too. Chase Harp's third touchdown reception of the season. And the block kick set up the touchdown. Point after. Up and good from Taylor Begley. Clint Ruth will kick off. Dominic Davis stands back along with Devery Henderson. Ball falls over, so it appears that Kentucky will have to do what LSU has done, and that is bring a player in to hold it. It'll be Irvin Flowers. And usually the guy selected to do this hasn't done it very much, so he's not real keen on keeping his <laughs> finger down while the kicker approaches, but it's one of their safeties will come up and hold the ball for the kicker. 3.43 to go in the third quarter. Line 
drive taken by Davis. He'll have some room to run it on the line drive kick. Dominic Davis. Davis out over the 35 to the 36 yard line. So good return from LSU and Dominic Davis. 32 yard return. Dustin Williams brings him down. Time for our Chick fil A nugget of today's game. And we will focus on number 11, Brady James. Look at the tackle totals 110, 113. And, you know, with three game, three, well, three and a half games, if you could say that, uh, left for LSU. Uh, this guy is going to shatter some records in terms of tackles. Yeah, he, I think he's got seven of the nine games he's played in are now 10 tackle plus games. He had a 19 tackle game to open up the season against Virginia Tech. Randall to throw, lofts it up off his back foot. Nobody there, no flags, and he got stuck hard. Who do you think was in there, Dave? How about number 18? Yeah, the big O. Otis Grigsby. <laughs> Talked to him for a while yesterday, a very likable young man. And how about Otis? You look at Big Otis and the way he's putting the heat on the senior, you know, he's like the only guy in his major which is interior design. Yeah, if he makes a suggestion on where I go at my house, <laughs> you got it, Big O. <laughs> Poor receivers. Pass sails on Randall. And I really think maybe that pressure, does, does Randall remember a hit like he just took? And is that why it kind of got away from him? Well, whenever you start to get some pressure, you start to feel it maybe turn the ball loose a little bit. This ball just sails on him. Remember, it's a little blustery. He's throwing this ball kind of into the wind. And if you don't follow through, it's going to sail on you. Well, the tide has turned to this point in terms of emotion in the stands. We'll see what happens here as LSU looking for a third down conversion. They're 0 for 4 throwing the football here in the third quarter. Pass is caught. Michael Clayton over the midfield strike. First down. Where do you go? How about the guy who's been Mr. Consistency for you? And that's number one, four in white. Kentucky decides to play coverage instead of coming after the quarterback. And LSU's line has responded. Whenever it's been a four-man rush, LSU line has stood up and given Randall time to throw the ball. Clayton runs a nice square in route, and Randall's right on the money with a throw. Well, that was a big first down. Three catches, 37 yards for Clayton. Joseph McDowell, good pressure. Vincent Burns, 6'2", 260 out of Lake Park, Georgia. They call him Sweet P, and that was a sweet play. Yeah, he's got a little something rubbed off on him from Grigsby because this is a super play coming from behind to drag a die down. Transfer from Northern Arizona. Nick Saban's club in Kentucky territory with 2.15 and counting to go in the third quarter. A dive. Needed to get to the 39 for the first down. They'll mark it at right around the 40. Quintus Cumbie and Vincent Burns make the stop. A die had a 63 yard touchdown run to open up the third quarter scoring for LSU. A die is such a patient runner. He lets his block set up. And again, it was a broken line play. By that, I mean they pulled a backside line and kicked out and he hit it up in there. Kentucky's defense trying to stop LSU on third and one. Two tight ends, handoff to a die. A die spins and falls forward. That will be enough to move the chains. Uh, Kentucky's going to have to rise up here now, Dave. The, they've got the crowd on their side after the big block. They punch it in, get the touchdown. At this point, they need to rise up and hold this team. Right here where they are now is in between that, that punting area where you try yeah. a field goal. Wind into the face, probably no field goal from this range. Kentucky's given up uh, 180 yards a game on the ground, and LSU, like most of the other clubs, having some success there. But 
Dave, in talking to LS or Kentucky coaches and players, they know they're going to give up some yardage. They're not too concerned about it. The biggest difference is they gave up 33 points a game last year. This year they're giving up 24 points, and that's the bottom line. It really is. I mean, what's the score at the end of the ball game? What they've done a good job of doing this year is turning the football over. Now they have not done that yet here in this in this game. I expect them to try to rake one out. Yeah, looking for a turnover on the Wildcat defenders at five last week. Big defensive hit. That'll bring a third down. And Jeremy Caudle gets credit for the tackle along with Deion Holtz. Caudle now with six stops. Here's third and four right now. Marcus Randall on a keeper. Denied. Dwayne Robertson. He and Caudle have been dynamite at the tackle spot for Kentucky today. Might be the first time Marcus has made a mistake on the option. Should have pitched this football. He had a block for his back. Decided to keep. Had no chance to make the first down. But he kicks it to Davis. I think he gets the first down. Yeah, there was Solomon Lee, the fullback, was out there providing a, an opportunity for Davis had he gotten the pitch. But instead, LSU will attempt a pretty important field goal. Wind swirling, but it's basically at the back of Corbello. Corbello's long this year is 48 yards. On the way. Got it. Nice job, John Corbello. And that was big. They got a first down, extended the drive, got him in the field goal range. We talked about him being around the 40, probably out of field goal range. We're able to get it down there close enough for Corbello to stick one through. A new career long for John Corbello, the senior out of Lafayette, Louisiana. It was a line drive, but not so bad. You know, the lower the better in this win. He had one kick blocked from 45, but those three points could loom large. LSU now leads by 10. Football fans, register to win a million dollars in the Bell South Million Dollar Kick Contest. Visit jpsports.com to register and check out the schedule for the Bell Zone, Bell South E-Zone rolling onto your campus around the South. Sign up and then start practicing your field goals. The grand prize winner gets a chance to kick for one million dollars at the 2002 Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl game on New Year's Eve. One million dollars. Why not? What the heck? It's chump change to a guy like you, Dave Rowe. Yeah, right. Corbello to kick off. He will take it. It'll be Abney at the one. Derek Abney turns the corner. Derek Abney over the 30. Nice return. Michael Clayton makes the tackle. Good blocking on that play. Kentucky's had some problems with penalties on special teams returns today, but not that time. A 31 yard return. So offensively, Kentucky has lost a little bit of momentum. Block, a block punt gave them a short field, but they haven't sustained a drive yet. No, they it's haven't, half. and they've got a long field. This, was, this is what LSU wants. They don't believe that people can drive the ball the length of the field on them. The big fellow is going to try to change their mind right here. Will Muschamp thinks that the team's got to go 60, 70 yards, eight, nine plays. They might screw it up somewhere along the way. Lorenzen, nice touch to Abney. He's got Brady James and Brady James. Brady James checks in at 245 pounds, trying to chase down Derek Abney at 170. James does it. First down and a big play for Kentucky. I don't want to take away from that, but what a heck of a play from your All-American. Yeah, it's a great decision by Lorenzen to get Abney the ball and the run, but you want to talk about an athlete. Watch number 11. That's a linebacker making the play on a wide receiver. Yeah, Abney's going at like 4-4 speed, and there's your 245-pound middle linebacker. That's pretty good stuff from James. And that's good stuff from R2 Spinner into LSU territory. Another reason why Artus has rushed for a thousand yards because his patience. Watch him wait. 
fullback gets a nice kick out block on Brady. Brady James and then Toos hits it right up in behind him. Nice eight yard pickup on first down. Good block from Campay, the fullback, number 45. In motion, Chris Bernard. Here's Artus. Driving. Artus picks up the first down at the 40. Brady James on the tackle. What happens in games if you can keep your running back in the game, which they've been able to do? The game's close enough where Artus can stay in the game. They can continue to pound him. The good backs get extremely strong in the fourth quarter, and we're seeing that now. Artus had a couple of good runs in the third quarter, but now you see him starting to really get a feel. Artus Pinner just over 100 yards, 110 today. That's the first running back to go over 100 yards against LSU in a dozen games. Nowhere to go for Touche right there. Lavalle with his fourth tackle. And I think even what's even more incredible, we talk about how this league can run the football. Most of these teams have solid running games. He's the first guy in 13 league games to rush for 100 yards against this LSU defense. Well, it says two things. The James gang uh, from LSU are a tremendous group. And uh, Artus Pinner and his offensive line and fullback are getting it done right now. Second down at nine, four wide outs. Quick drop, Lorenzen, Abney at the 33-yard line, so that'll bring up a third down and short. Well, the announcers for this game are selected and compensated. They're paying you for this? By Jefferson so. Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. I just came for the meal. They got a real <laughs> good meal up here behind us. I saw you woof down about six brownies up there. You got your... <laughs> Don't say that. My <laughs> wife's <laughs> listening. Here we go with third down and three. High formation. Can't pay the fullback. Two receivers to the top of the screen. Pitch comes to the near side. Artus Pinner needed to get just across the 30. That's going to be real close. Oh, boy. Let's see what Steve Shaw calls for. Measurement, or does he give him the first down? He will call for the sticks to come in. Artus is really running hard. Like I said, a good back gets stronger as they go along. Watch him break through, dive for the first down. I think he got a kind spot there, too. I thought the ball was a little shy of the line. He got a pretty good spot. I think he's going to be a little bit shy, but it's definitely go range, I'm thinking. About a eight, nine inch difference. You know, I'd lay a lot on the line right here that they can't keep 22 from getting this first down. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm with you. 300 pounder, Jared Lorenzen. And I don't think they mess with even trying to hand the football to Toos. I think what you do is you get, you just let the big fella try to find the little seam and get the first down. Well, Jared says he's just a big boned guy. Well, get those big bones right over the line of scrimmage and you'll pick up a first down. They hand it off to Pinner and Artus driving. Look at that. Down to the 25. Look at Jared Lorenzen clapping to the offensive line, telling those guys, nice job. Well, the line play is what this is all about, Dave. This is just big on big right here, Dave. Coming off the ball and hitting people in the mouth. And two falling those blocks and sticking it up in there. 23 carries, 118 yards for R2 Spinner. Drive is alive for Kentucky. They trail by 10. Pressure comes. Lorendon hit as he throws it off the fingertips of Chase Hart. Randall Gay was in coverage. Brent Pease, the offensive coordinator. Team's only put up 14 points on the board, but got a pretty good drive going right now. Looking at second down and 10 with 10-19 to go in the football game. To the corner of the end zone, looking for Boone, and Lorenzen throws it out of the end zone. Third down and 10 from the 25. Lorenzen now has thrown 22 passes today without an interception, which means his totals 
are uh, up closing in on 150. 145 now without an interception. Yeah, he hasn't been spectacular, but he's taking care of the football. A Pizza Hut scoreboard. Ford on top of Vandy, 14 to 3. And whoo, Ohio State moved up to number two in the BCS. Escapes Purdue. And Notre Dame trailing. Lorenzen over the middle. Boom, touchdown! His second of the game. A 25-yard strike, Lorenzen to Boone. What a really good read by Lorenzen. He sees the safety vacate the middle of the field. Defensive back trailing his receiver. He never turns around. Lorenzo puts the ball where the DB can't make a play on it. That's a good read by the big quarterback, and he's a little excited about that one. Bad snap. Oh, boy. Yeah. That will not be good. Antonio Hall. Standing there as Pakalak just kind of pitched it to him. Pakalak the holder, and you know, Antonio Hall will laugh about it, but that's a big missed. On the offense, penalty is declined. The point is no good. For Aaron Boone, he now has a couple of TDs today, bringing his reception total for touchdowns to nine. Yeah, Jared's done a good job of getting everybody involved. Boone's made two big plays, but. There's been several people make catches and he spread the ball out around and let's not forget Artus. Yes. Artus made a made a couple of real good runs in that drive to allow him to extend the drive. Went Ruth kickoff taken by Henderson. He'll bring it out of the end zone. No flags to this point. Henderson all the way across the field out over the 35. A heck of a return. Jared Lorenzen, Dave, you said from a quarterback standpoint, you say that he doesn't get enough credit for really the kind of throws he's been making this, this, this season. Exactly right, Dave. He has all the throws. Here's a throw, just a string, deep pass. Look how accurate this is. That's off his back foot. Then he's got the little touch shot for a touchdown to Hart. And then here he's got to put one with a little touch. He's got to have some zip on it, too. He sticks it in there after reading the coverage. Three touchdowns for Lorenzen. Let's see what Marcus Randall can do to try to respond to Jared Lorenzen, the sophomore. I'll hand it off to Davis. Dominic gets a couple. Randall, by the way, today, 8 of 18, 172 yards. Jeremy Cottle on the tackle. Marcus has played extremely well for LSU today. It's been a breakout game for him, in my opinion. Uh, and he'll only get better from here. But as a Kentucky defense, you got to go back to what you started doing. Make him beat you. Don't let him beat you with the run. Gang up on the run and make Marcus Randall make a throw to beat you. Second down and seven. Quarterback draw stuck. Loses three on the play. Morris Lane, the senior. That's just good coaching by Coach Goodner. He realizes that his front seven has played extremely well. They're going to run through blocks to the quarterback, and that's what they did on that play. Now they've got the young quarterback in a third and long situation. Third down and nine. The crowd will tell you what happens on this conversion. Randall pass off the arms of his intended target, Jarrell Myers. LSU will have to punt. But that series was pressure, pressure, pressure. They said, hey, you beat us. We're coming after you. Make a play. And they did. Otis Grigsby, number 18, the senior. Has anybody played harder than that guy has today? He came out with his motor on in warm-ups. Donnie Jones kicks it to Derek Abney, who lost it in the sun. Derek Abney coughed it up inside the 20. That was trouble from the get-go. Let's see who's got it. We're waiting on a signal. 
and it's LSU's football. Adrian Mays forced the fumble, but you can also give the credit to the sunshine. Yeah, he definitely loses his ball in the sun. He tries to get away from it, but it's too late. He just flat out lost it. And okay, we're constantly talking about big series in the game. This is huge for Kentucky's defense and big for LSU's offense. Abney almost tried to get away from it, so it didn't hit him because he lost it and just almost didn't know where to go. Tough break, Wildcats, LSU in business. The pitch to Davis. It's a good block. Davis trying to get the corner, picks up the first down. When his Cumbie runs him out of bounds. LSU's thought process here is we have to ensure three, seven puts us in a commanding situation. Let's check in with Buzz. Dave, you and I were out here yesterday when we were doing rehearsal and things, and we looked at that sun when it pops out. It's about halfway across the field, but the sun only contributed to that swirling wind. You saw Derek go one way, and then he had to come back. It is a tough, tough wind right now. Thanks, Buzz. Of course, I said the sun wouldn't be a factor. Guess I was wrong. On first down, give to Dominic Davis. Burns brings him down. Buzz just brought that up because he wanted to prove he was right yesterday and I was wrong. That's all. All right, Buzz, you're fired. <laughs> when the Jefferson Pilot Sports Crew is on the road covering SEC football, we like to eat at Huddle House and always enjoy their big house breakfast and lunch platters. 24-20, clock ticking, 7-10 to go in the football game. LSU in front in the Western Division. Kentucky can't win the East, but they can do something only one other team has done since 84, and that's win seven games. Dominic Davis inside the five. Otis Grigsby runs him out of bounds. They've only run, they've run the option play selectively today, but they've been successful with it. Again, he gets Davis out on the edge, good solid blocking out in front as they push towards the goal line. Need we say big play? I tip my cap today to number 30, Solomon Lee, the fullback for LSU. He's had some great blocks. Third down conversions today. LSU 6 of 14, but they rank next to last in the league. Randall to throw. Batted in the air, incomplete. Fourth and goal from the two, and here comes John Corbello. We can't emphasize how big a series of downs for the Kentucky defense that was to come in and hold that to a three-point field goal opportunity. Little surprised that Randall wasn't on the corner initially. Now he gets there, but it's a scramble. A little surprised they didn't put him on a run pass option. Morris Lane batted in the air. Here's Corbello, hit from 49, a career long, a little while ago. This kick from 19 is up and good. 27-20, LSU in front of the Wildcats. We've got a good one in Lexington with six minutes to play. We got ourselves a seven point ball game. LSU on the road, the second consecutive week. And there's Derek Abney, who just fumbled a punt, which basically gave LSU a chance, three points that they converted. Corbello kicks it to Abney, but it's a good kick. Abney will take a knee, and the Wildcats will bring it out to the 20 yard line. Getting interesting the Southeastern Conference. The road to Atlanta. Lorenzen going up top, looking for Sims, and dropped it. Battling Norm Lejeune. And Sims actually got both hands on the football. He did. He got a little face guarded by the defender, but it was incidental contact. They released Sims up the sideline and get him isolated on Lejeune. A little bump there at the end, maybe. 
But he put the ball in the bread basket again, just couldn't quite bring it down. You know what? I think that was a pretty good play by Norm Lejeune. Yeah, he, he kept himself from putting his hands on the guy, and that's what you can't do. You can't put your hands on it. Artus Pinner driving. Artus Pinner is not a big guy, but he's got a lot of strength. 215 pounder, five feet 11, and just keeps the legs turning. I tell you, we we know there's some NFL scouts in the crowd right now, and he's proven that he gets stronger as the game goes along, and that's that's an attribute to a running back that you you bring in and you give the ball 25, 30 times in a game. He's played a solid game. 127 yards, 5.3 average. Now remember, this LSU team hadn't given up 100 yards to a single rusher in over 12 games, and you got to go back 13 league games to find an SEC rusher with over 100. Dwan Hicks of Middle Tennessee was the last man to do it. That time, the Tigers on the spot. On third and a yard, I don't know that he made it that far. He had to get to the 30, he had to get to the strike. Oh, they gave him a pretty good spot. Cameron Vaughn, Jack Hunt brought down Pinner, but a good spot for Kentucky. All right, well, the clock becomes your enemy now if you're Kentucky. You continue to mix the run in from time to time, and it's now start time to start screening, maybe getting the ball to Pinner out in space. You're going to have to throw the football some because you got 70 yards to go. Clock ticking, 435. Lorenz it goes up top looking for the speedster Sims that time he was battled with and a flag comes down Randall Gay was on the coverage. I don't think there's much of a question about that. Play. No I think this is a good call he got his hands on him and that's the big key that's what they're looking for. If the hands are put on the receiver they're going to call it. You see the hand reach out grab the back. 15 yards from the previous spot. That is the first penalty against LSU in the second half. They had seven for 65 yards in the first half. LSU's played extremely well on the defensive side of the football. They've given up a couple of plays, but their secondary's played really well. Wildcats moving closer to midfield. Ball rests at the 45. High formation. A wrench and hit and drop at the 38. Lavalle and Turner will get credit for the sack, and that's the Tigers' first sack of the big lefty, Jared Lorenzen. LSU's come to the realization if they're going to get the big guy down, they're going to have to come with pressure. And they come again with six people, and they're able to wrap him up, give him no escape routes, and knock him down. Only a two man pattern. They only had two people out for Lorenzen to throw to, and credit the corners, blanket coverage. Second down at 17 now. That quieted the crowd down. Here comes more pressure. Lorenzen and Abney gets taken to the turf and a flag comes in from the line judge on the far side. Boy, Abney just went airborne. Jeremy Lawrence. No, it doesn't take a lot to knock him up. No, but air. that's what the linebacker's job is to do. He's going to hover in the middle. And he's supposed to knock off crossing routes. Now, he didn't realize the ball had been already delivered, Pass but that's his job. On the defense, penalty will be enforced at the spot of the foul. It will be an automatic first down. The reason the umpire did not make that call, and he's standing right there. You'll see him run by the umpire. Yeah, he's you say, well, why didn't, why didn't you make that call? He turns and look, he's looking at the offensive line. He's watching for holding and things like that. that it's the line judge that has to make that call, and he made the right one. Boy, this crowd, they've been on edge this entire second half. First down. Artus Penner. Artus to the 47. Artus, by the way, since he went over 100 yards, it's the seventh time this year he's done that, tying the single season Kentucky mark set by Mo Williams in 1995 who also had seven 100 yard games. He's still got a lot of time in the game Dave. I don't think there's any reason to get in a big hurry. You gained you had a good gain on first down. You're right around midfield. Lorenzen's got everything in control right now. Continue with this tempo. 
Second down and four. Pretty good spot maybe to take a shot. There's Boone on a reverse. Let's see where they mark it. He had to get to the LSU 48. They'll mark it at uh, just inside the 49. Norm Lejeune. Run him out and ran him out of bounds. And that'll play. Looks like they've marked it uh, about a yard shy of Marcus. Marcus Spears makes a super play here. He doesn't bite on the run. They've had success running the football. He stays at home, forces Boone to the outside, and Lejeune comes up and makes the tackle. But Marcus Spears they plays that perfectly. He's responsible for contained backside, stayed at home, did the job. And he's playing on a bad ankle. He missed Auburn with a high ankle sprain. Coaches didn't know how many snaps they would get out of Marcus today, but he's been in there for a majority of them. Gutsy performance by the left defensive end. Penner. On third and short, and a face mask. Norman Lejeune grabbed the Pinner face mask, and that'll move Kentucky into LSU territory, deep into LSU territory if it's a 15 yarder. And an injured Kentucky player as well. Looks like Jeremiah Drobny. Number 84 is down. Incidental face mask on the defense. Five yards to the It will be a first down. Well, whether it's incidental or he meant to grab it, it re results from five yards to 15 yards. You be the judge. Looks like he may have pulled him down by the mask, but he tried to get his hand off of it. Nevertheless, that extends the drive. You get the first down, and you know we've seen this a couple times. Defenses have helped the offense. Early in the half, it was Kentucky had a couple of face mask penalties. Now Nick Saban's defense comes up with a bad play on the face mask. I'll say this: after the game, Nick Saban will speak about his penalties as either the reason they maybe lost this game or a contributor to why this game was so close. Seven in the first half, and on this drive. They've had four penalties already, and it's that's something he just cannot stand. Well, certainly in this situation, too, David, the, the game is on the line. And uh, I don't think if he had a choice to make, I think he would like to see his defense out there trying to save the game for him. So he's, he's got the unit on the field that he wants out there. They just have made some mistakes here in this drive. Well, LSU has a tough road to go for an SEC West crown. Defending champs have only lost once, so the the race is theirs to lose, but they've got some tough football games coming up. After this one, it's Alabama, Ole Miss, and Arkansas. Arkansas playing pretty well. Of course, uh, leading South Carolina was our last update. Uh, but I tell you, that's a tough place to go, too, Dave. You got to go into uh, go into uh, Fayetteville and play at Razorback Stadium, the last game of the year with the SEC championship possibly on the line. Arkansas, by the way, leading South Carolina 23 to nothing in the fourth quarter. Lorenzen pump fakes. Looking for Boone. Aaron Boone, touchdown! Wildcats, 44 yards. The third touchdown reception for Aaron Boone today. Anybody that's a detractor from the Jared Lorenzen campaign is, is, and have got their head on backwards. Now this is big right here because they missed the last one, Dave. Got to pound this one through. Taylor Beckley. This one is good. Boy, had they made the other point after they lead by one. We are tied at 27 in Lexington, Kentucky. There's just no give up in Guy Morris's team. They continue to pound the run, but look at the offensive line step up here. Look at all the time for the big fella to deliver. And again, a nice soft ball. Good pump fake the outside, pulled the safety out of the middle of the field, and then laid it up. And this isn't easy. Boone gears down and makes the catch. Aaron Boone, three 
touchdown receptions today. He has three catches for 112 yards. Of course, they've all been for six points. Lorenzen now 12 of 25, four touchdowns, 210 yards on the afternoon. Aaron Boone, a junior college transfer who spent a couple of years on a Mormon mission in 97 and 98 in Peru, has stepped up big time this afternoon. Lorenzo now this season with 24 touchdown passes, three interceptions. He, he puts his people up the bat, baby. He's, lo he's lofted a few balls, and the people, people may say, well, they're thrown behind. No, he's putting his guy up the bat. He's put Boone up the bat three times. He's answered the call all three times, and that's a quality of a quarterback. He trusts his people to make plays. The offensive line steps up, Boone steps up. We're tied. Let's see how LSU can respond. Two great returners in Henderson and Davis. This looks like Henderson will have the chance from the three. Devery Henderson runs into a blue jersey at the 18-yard line. Raymond Fontaine on the stop. Let's check in with Buzz. Buzz, I got to ask you, how loud is it down there? Well, it is crazy down here right now, Dave, but I think a real good indicator is going to be how much confidence Nick Saban has in his young quarterback right now. His defense is so strong. Does he keep the ball on the ground, try to get a couple of first downs and get to OT, or does he let the young guy take a couple of shots down here? That'll be an indicator of how he feels about Marcus Randall. Well, I think it's a great, uh, that's a great thought, but I don't think there's any question that he's got to give his quarterback a chance to make a play, though. Davis loses a yard. Ronnie Riley with the tackle. Now both teams have timeouts. Kentucky will probably let the clock continue to run. Now if they stop them on second down, I think you see Guy Morris burn a timeout to conserve time and not let LSU run the clock out. Guy Morris said he wanted to win a home game for the fans because they've been so supportive. Vincent Burns, Sweet Pea the sophomore. They had the shovel play called again here, Dave, and they blow it up. Burns blows it up. He cut in between the pitch and the quarterback, watch Burns getting away. Z blows up the play. And there's your timeout from Guy Morris. They wanted the shovel pass there, the one they scored on earlier. Trying to get the ball to Henderson on the run. Vincent Burns. And 11 tackles for loss coming into this one. He can add another one to his totals. He transferred in from Northern Arizona, and Guy Morris and company are happy to have him. And you know, Sweet Pea, he's a, he's a Lowndes High School product, which is an athlete factory in South Georgia. Well, Sweet Pea and company have put LSU at a third down and 19 spot. Kentucky has one timeout remaining. Dave Gian, what do you do if you're LSU? I think they got to play defense. I, you're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna be very conservative here. Maybe a screen or a draw, and let your defense try let to keep defense. Kentucky from scoring. We'll see. Randall in the end zone. Randall dodges a potential safety. Picked off at the 38. What a play. Mike Williams had a chance, but Dwayne Robertson nearly had a game-winning safety. Several things happened on the play, Dave. <laughs> they had a chance for a safety, and then Marcus Randall's incredible athletic ability, he escapes the situation. Now, here's where Marcus makes the mistake. Take off and run with the football. 
Why? Because you minimize the field position situation. Now they got a punt out of their own end zone. And they would have kept the clock moving and maybe forced Kentucky to use a timeout. Instead, clock stops. They got to punt it away. Jones with a good kick out of the end zone. Abney from the 44. Derek Abney running backwards. A flag down. They will move it back in Kentucky with another bad play on a punt return. Dave, they have had, I've seen a lot of yellow flags on returns today by Kentucky. Maybe their worst day in that aspect. Yeah, it really has been. And they have so much confidence in Abney that everybody's throwing, trying to make a block. It's a little face pass on the kicking team. Five yards, added to the end of the line. It'll be a first down. How about that? I stand corrected. Every Guy Morris was on the field, about ready to go after somebody, like everybody in this crowd. And you get a face mask. Well, fortunately, the guy that Guy was going to go after gets to go home <laughs> early unscathed. Oh, they have so much confidence in the return team that they all are throwing, making blocks, and Abney, just a terrific player. Wow, what a break. What a uh, unbelievable break. Lorenzen lofts it up, trying to make Boone make the play. Norman Lejeune on the coverage. We've got a wild one going on in Lexington. How about this call? They're in field goal, the in field goal range. You know, I think the officiating crew's done a super job today, Dave, but I think they missed this one. I hate to say it, but he impeded the receiver from coming back to make the play. There's Taylor Begley, the field goal kicker. Eight of 12 coming into today. He's Waiting on the sidelines. Boone could not hold it. Late flag. Jack Hunt will be called for pass interference. Nick Saban can't believe it. Jack's played a heck of a game in a starting role at the free safety spot. He really has. They said that right arm around the waist was what did it. You know, and again, Dave, we talk about it's the hands. You put the hands on the receiver, they're going to call you. Buzz, you have more down the sidelines. Yeah, earlier in the half, Taylor Begley told Mark Nelson, the special teams coach, he thought he was good from 42 yards on this end of the field. I don't know how much leg he's got left. He's been kicking all half. <laughs> R2 spinner. R2 spinner inside the 15. LSU with two timeouts remaining. Kentucky with one clock ticks. It'll bring up second down and short. LSU finally burns a timeout with 22 seconds left. R2 spinner today. 27 carries. 142 yards. Oh. Well, they've had tremendous performances from all their big name players. Lorenzi's played tremendous. Boone's played tremendous. Abney's made some plays. You know what? Last year, these two teams met in Lexington, and what a game it was. LSU took a 22 to 10 lead after two quarters, but Jared Lorenzen replaced Shane Boyd at quarterback after halftime and threw two touchdown passes in the second half for a three-point Wildcat lead. But Rohan Davey led the Tigers on an 80-yard drive that culminated with a six-yard touchdown pass to Michael Clayton with 13 seconds left. Tigers win it 29-25. LSU went on to win seven of eight games and capture the SEC championship. And Kentucky looking for a little bit of payback today. Setting up for the field goal. Taylor Begley.
The red shirt freshman out of Danville Kentucky about to attempt the biggest kick of his career with 15 seconds left as Kentucky spends their last time out. Ooh, and Brent Peace is not happy with Jared Lorenzen about something. Maybe it was the timeout. But Taylor Begley, 8 of 12, kicking the football. His long is 49 yards. That shouldn't be an issue from where the ball is at the 12-yard line. But as a Kentucky boy growing up, you know he's dreamed about this. And he is about to make his way on to the football field. Buzz. Dave, we've seen a lot of comment in the NFL about when do you kick it. A lot of folks have chosen not to kick it on third down, and they've gotten burned. Kentucky's got the first down with 15 seconds left on the clock. If he misses, he'd still get another crack, it would seem to me. I couldn't agree with you more, Buzz. I think that's a great call. They got 15 if seconds. The ball they got a bad snap. If the ball doesn't cross the line of scrimmage and Kentucky recovers it, they'll have another opportunity. Or if it's a bad snap, your holder just falls on the football and you line up again and hit it. Now they don't have enough time, there's 15 seconds left. 29 yard field goal for the win. Kentucky was down twice in this football game, was down 21 to 7, 24 to 14, and continued to fight back. And now they're 11 seconds away from going to 7 and 3. Nick Saban's team somewhat self destructed in penalties late in this football game. They had it going. They made some mental mistakes, Dave, and I, I don't think we can forget how well Marcus Randall has played for LSU today either. He's going to get lost in the right. shuffle on this thing, but played a tremendous game for LSU. Now they still got 11 seconds, and there's some great athletes out there in white jerseys. Drive kick. It'll go to Henderson. He will run out of bounds in a hurry with nine seconds left. What a difference it is from sideline to sideline if you're a coach. Nick had one timeout left. He wanted to try to burn it nice. The kicker there, but they didn't get it in in time. I don't think it would have mattered. And Taylor Begley with the biggest kick of his young Wildcat career from 29 yards. And the fans are coming in on the sides in the end zone. What a season it's been for the Wildcats. And this is a monumental win for this program and Guy Morris. Whistle blows, Steve Shaw stops play. Head ball, delay of game on the offense, five yard penalty, repeat first down. Now from a defensive standpoint for Guy Morris, you don't want to fall asleep here, of course. It's a 95 yards, 92 yards away, but as a defensive back, knock the football down. Students line the end zone. They're just waiting to get onto this field. Let's see how they handle the goal post. I think the crowd has been a factor today, too, Dave. I think they've really helped, helped this football team. There was a pass interference non-call 
in the third, beginning of the third quarter and got this crowd riled up. Clayton over the middle, first down, clock stops. With two seconds to play. Guy Morris just got some Gatorade dumped on him. I think he'd feel a whole lot better had the clock ran out. Yeah. I'll tell you what, the Gatorade guy, you got to go get you another bucket because one bucket ain't going to do it. They got to go get him another bucket to get that guy. <laughs> Randall, as time expires, lets it fly. Oh my goodness! Touchdown LSU! They win the game! They win the football game! Unbelievable sequence of events. LSU will go home with a victory. 33 30 as Kentucky fans tear down a goalpost. Let's check in with Dave Baker. Nick, I guess that's why they call it a 60 minute game. That's why they do, I guess. But, you know, it was a lucky play, but. You know, our players played hard in the game. I mean, I don't know what to say. I feel bad for Kentucky players, but hey, this is a big moment for us, and I'm happy as heck for our team. We didn't play very well in the second half, so you know, we got to get some things fixed, that's for sure. What were you trying to do on that last play? Well, we're just going what we call Berlin, where we send everybody down the field, heave it up as far as we can, tip it up, have one guy keep running, and every caught it. Everybody talks about how tough it is to defend a championship. You've got to have something like this happen to you sometime along the road. Well, sometimes you've got to be a little lucky, and I think that was our luck right there. All right, Coach, thanks a bunch. Hey, thank you. All right, take care. That's Nick Saban. Oh, my goodness. Let's go back and take another look. Well, every team has this play. Buy some time for the quarterback and then hang it up. And what you try to do is tip the ball to one of your, def one of your players beyond. And Henderson is right there. It's a Sunday hop right in his hands. As a defensive back, we talked about it before the play happened. You got to knock the ball down, not up. They went for the interception. The ball bounds off. It's just like a volleyball play. And Henderson, who's had a monster day today, is there to make the play. Five catches, 201 yards for Henderson and three TDs. Marcus Randall. And Dave, the amazing thing is, after the big play, the students are stunned. Marcus Randall with a, a gutsy, gutsy performance as we look at Guy Morris in disbelief. Jerry Lorenzen in disbelief. Well, they're not the only ones in disbelief because one end zone of the crowd had come out on the field and we're going to tear the goalposts down. They're just now finding out but what happened. Well, let's put this in perspective now. Obviously, one of the most shocking games in SEC history.